So we're talking about a way to write functions and, and show functions called function notation. And when we finish with this lesson today, we'll be able to use function notation to simplify algebraic expressions. Now, function notation is pretty simple, and, and what it is, it's just a way to write a function. So not only do we see the range value or our output value, but we can see in that function notation what we started with or, or the input. Function notation is written this way. We would say uh, some letter with some parentheses and my input value. So write that down, please. We would say that as f of x. It is not f times x. And that f of x is another way to represent y, or the output. So remember that x is our input value, x can, is the domain, and then we have um, y, which is our output, or range, and it may also be written as f of x, or we could use other functions, g of x. We can make that, that function be any letter that we want to. So let's look at how we would use that function notation to describe or to express or to represent a function. First of all, I'm going to uh, give you several functions. The first one is f of x equals 3x plus 7. The next one is a different one, and I'm going to call it g of x. That way I can distinguish the two. You know, f of x is the first one, g of x is the second one, and, and it's 2x minus 1. I'll give you another function. This one we'll say is h of x, and it's equal to negative 4x minus 2. And we'll give you one additional function. This function I'm going to write a little differently. I'm going to call it a, and I'm going to give you the coordinates, which are discrete points or disconnected points of 5 and 6. That's my input of 5, my output of 6. 1 and 5, my input of 1, output of 5. 3 and 2. And negative 1 and 4. <clears throat> so I've got four different functions here. f of x, g of x, h of x, and function a. So I'll use those four functions to find values where I have an input value. Let me give you an example of that. So we're going to find some things. First one, find f of 2. Now remember, I've been given the function above. So f of 2, I'm going to use the function that's labeled with the f. So all I do to find f of 2 
is I use that function and where there is an X, I'm going to plug in this value of 2. Now notice I use parentheses. I, whether you're simplifying expressions or evaluating functions, anytime there's a variable, I'm going to tell you, you need to put parentheses around because that helps you sometimes to, to simplify the positive and negatives. It just keeps everything the way it needs to be. So if I go ahead and do the math, I, I just bring down that this is f of 2. And this is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. I have to multiply first plus 7. So f of 2 is 13. Because I asked you to evaluate this function at 2, the problem that I gave you. And then that's where you're going to see the problems. They're going to say, okay, find f of 2. Well, I had to use the function f of x equals 3x plus 7, and then I take every place there's an x in that function and plug it in 2. That's an excellent question. Thanks. Because that needs to be clear, otherwise it doesn't make a lot of sense. Second example, let me give you another one that's kind of similar. This time I'm going to ask you to find h of negative 5. Now, do I use the same function? No, I'm going to use a function that, that we've identified with the h. So that is h of x equals negative 4x minus 2. Let me just write that function out first. h of x equals negative 4x minus 2. So to find h of negative 5, I'm going to put a set of parentheses down where my x is and insert the negative 5. So negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20, and then I'm going to subtract 2. So my answer is h of negative 5 is 18. Any questions so far? That seems pretty straightforward. Let's go to a third example. All right, so let's uh, let's up it just a little bit. This time I'll ask you to find h of n plus 2. Well, remember the h function from above here is h of x equals negative 4x minus 2. Okay, now there's a problem with this one. The problem is that now my input also has a variable. So, so what do I do with that? Now, let me show you. h of n plus 2. And remember I said use parentheses and this is one of the reasons why. So where there is an x I'll plug in just the m plus 2, just like it said. That's my input value, even though it has a variable included in it. So if I do the math here, I know that negative 4 times m plus 2, that I need to distribute the negative 4 through. And so I'll get negative 4m minus 8. Minus 2. So all I do is plug uh, multiply a negative 4 times n, a negative 4 times a positive 2, and I got a negative 8. And then I bring down my subtraction of 2. I've got some like terms, the negative 8 and the negative 2, so it's negative 4m minus 10. So h of m plus 2 has an output of negative 4m minus 10. So even though my input included a variable, so will two will my output include a variable. Now 
I write this one down, and it's a little different. This is two times g of four. Okay, so first of all, we got to remember that g of x from those I gave you at the top is two x minus one. And that was just given to start out with here. g of x is equal to 2x minus 1. So I need to use that function. And I'll evaluate g of x at 4. So I know, want to know what is g of 4. And remember, where there's an x, I'll put a parenthesis. I'll substitute a 4 in for x. Now, I get 2 times 4, which is 8. 8 minus 1, which is 7. Okay, so g of 4 is 7, but I'm asked to find 2 times g of 4. So what I'm asked to find is to take g of 4, which is 7, and multiply it by 2. So 2 times g of 4, then it would be 2 times 7, or... 14. I'll look at one last example, uh, well, of this type. And if you remember, I gave you a function that I labeled A. And it had these input values, 5, and I put a 6, 1, and 5, 3, and 2, negative 1, and 4. So if I asked you to find A of 5, well, this is a little simpler in a way because if I have an input of 5, I have an output of what? 6, right? That's all I do there. What about if I asked you to find A of 3? What would you say? Yeah, 2. Because here is my input of 3. Output is 2. All right, so this question is a little bit trickier. So what is A of 0? Yes, sir. Um, okay, so I'm looking at my my function here, I have an input of 5, I have an input of 1, I have an input of 3, I have an input of negative 1. I don't see an input of 0, do you? Okay, so I, I see you're thinking of that. You're like, well, it just is 0. But actually, you're on the right track. But with an input uh, of 0 that I do not even include in that function, what do you think? No, but you're close. It's going to be... No solution. We have to have an input in our function that has an output. If I ask for A of 0 and there is no output for it, then we would say no solution. That one's a bit trickier, but really not difficult. You just didn't know what the answer is. Second thing I want to look at within our function notation is how to do a composition of a function. So a composition of a function is a little different, but it, it's still along the same lines. We kind of almost did a composition earlier where we had a variable. We didn't really, but it's similar to that. Here's what a composition of a function is.
A composition of a function is simply a function within a function. Give you a for example here. F of G of X. What I've done is I've put inside F a function of G of X. So I would say that's F of G of X. Okay. Or I could put several inside of each other. So let's make it extra complicated. I have f of g of h of x. Also a composition that f of g of x could be also written this way, f of g of x. Just a different way to write it, but it means the same thing. So let me give you some functions here. The first one, f of x equals 7x plus 4. g of x equals 2x minus 4. And h of x equals 3x. So let's find some composition of functions. Let's find f of g of x. So just kind of like I would do uh, order of operations sort of thing, I have to go to the innermost set of parentheses. So when I have f of g of x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate g of x. And then I'll take that answer and use it for f of x. So I have to start inside and work my way out. So um, let's find then f of g of 3. So I'll start out with g of 3. Okay, so I've got my g function here. g of x equals 2x minus 4, so it equals... 2x minus 4. So what I need to do is plug in the value for x. My input then is 3. So I'll put a 3 in there. Up here where you can see. Then 2 times 3 is 6. Subtract 4. So 6 minus 4 is 2. So g of 3 is equal to 2. Okay, so what I found is that innermost function g of 3. Okay? And that answer is 2. So now I need to go find f of 2 because that's inside my function of f. So f of 2 then is the f function if I look at it, is 7x plus 4. So I'll put a parentheses down for my variable. And now I need to put a 2 in. So I get 2 times 2, which is 4, 
and 4 plus 4, which is 8. Let me say that again. Now, ah, I've got a little mistake here. Hang on. It's 7x, not 2x. Wrote the wrong thing. It's 7 times 2, which is 14 plus 4. Minor correction there. So 14 plus 4 is 18. So f of g of 3 is 18. It's not really difficult, is it? Maybe a little bit, you know, tedious, but definitely not difficult. Let's look at a second. Write this down, please. Want to do g of g of five? Well, first of all, g our, our g function is g of x equals two x minus four. So the first thing I need to find is what is g of 5. Okay, so it's 2 times 5 minus 4. Well, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 4 is 6. So g of 5 is 6. I'll take that value. 6, which is the value for g of 5, and I'll put it in there. So now I need to find g of 6. Same thing, 2 parentheses minus 4, I'm going to put in a 6, so I get 12 minus 4. And so g of 6 is equal to 12 minus 4, or 8. So g of g of 5 is equal to 8. Give you just a second to finish copying that down. Let's look at one more. Let's see if we can really be challenged here. So this one is F. of g of h2. Okay, so we're going to start with which function? f, g, or h? h, yeah, we've got to start with the innermost function. And remember, h of x, we've already written down, is equal to 3x. So that's my h function. So I just need to evaluate h of 2. So it's 3 times 2. So h of 2 then is equal to 3 times 2 or 6. Next I need to find g of 6 because that's the value for h of 2. Well, remember, g of x, the function is 2x minus 4. So 
so I need to plug in a 6 for x. So 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. So g of 6 is 8. You know, I really wouldn't have had to have done that math all over again because in a previous problem, I saw that g of 6 was 8. But that's okay. I need to practice. Then after I find g of 6, I'm going to take that value 8, and I need to find f of 8. Remember my f function, if f of x is equal to 7x plus 4. All right, so f of 8 will be 7 times 8 plus 4. 7 times 8, 56. 56 plus 4 is 60. So f of 8 is 60. So f of g of h of 2 is equal to 60. So that was probably the most challenging one we've looked at. It's not really hard, but it's going to be very important that you take the time to, to walk through each of the steps. Okay? And it's going to take a little bit of paper, a little bit of pencil, a little bit of patience. All right? And that's all you have to do to use function notation and to find the composition of functions.